this is a kind of universal discussion that is going on that people nowadays don't read very much and um, there is a decline in, in writing as well. Uh, this is in face of uh, the, the modern technology that is posing a great deal of challenge, particularly for young people who don't seem to read very much. This is what is believed uh, universally. And we have seen recently that uh, a lot of bookshops have closed down. In trains and planes, people don't read books. Instead, you see them with iPad and iPhones. It gives you a clear sense that uh, there is a great transformation that is taking place. Some of the changes, of course, uh, uh, are welcome. Uh, we want to have the internet, we want to have uh, iPad, we want to have iPhone, but uh, not at the expense of people not reading or, or writing. And um, this is a challenge that we have taken in these uh, segments, that we want to encourage people to read and write. And uh, I hope that uh, by the end of the, the series, you will be inspired and you will begin to believe that uh, books matter, that uh, reading and writing matters, and that uh, literature is important for our culture and for civilization. Now, one of the heartening things is that uh, I have noticed uh, in Fiji, there's a small surge of uh, writing, particularly by older generation. And uh, there could be complex reasons for this, uh, but uh, I, I think uh, this is uh, something to do with um, a, a kind of a resurgence of uh, interest in literature and writing, particularly in Fiji. And this weekend, uh, there is a launching of a, an autobiography by an Indo-Fijian. In Toronto, a book has been published, uh, an autobiographical work by an ex-principal, Mr. Bhim Singh. Uh, there is uh, also a very interesting autobiography being written by a musician, which is uh, halfway completed. And when it comes out, I think it is going to be a groundbreaking work because it will uh, describe how music evolved in Fiji. Uh, at the moment, I'm reading a very interesting autobiography, and that is uh, by Barack Obama. It's called Dreams from My Father. And I'm really fascinated by this book. It's it's a brilliant work of autobiography, dazzling use of language, and fascinating storytelling. And someday we might have a bit of time to discuss this book because I think uh, it's a remarkable work by a politician or by any kind of writer uh, who has ventured into writing an autobiography. And uh, I've also learned that uh, my good friend, uh, Professor Satyam Nandan, has been given an award to write an autobiography. Now all this augurs well uh, for writing and for literature. Someday we will take a little bit more time to discuss uh, the autobiographical form of writing. But at the moment uh, you'll see from our discussions where we're heading, we are trying to tell you how you can transform a certain kinds of existing um, literatures into writing your your own short fiction. That is the direction in which we are moving towards helping you to write short fiction. Now one thing I would like to say about the autobiographical works that I have read from Fiji in particular uh, is that uh, these works could have gained a great deal from learning about craft of writing. And that is what uh, we are interested in telling you about the actual craft of writing. And um, in this segment today, I shall be talking about the craft that is involved in transforming some of the existing forms from oral literature like myths, fables, and folk tales 
into short fiction or short story. Now, the oral form is often said to be a simple form of writing. This is not necessarily true. My own uh, research has shown that uh, oral literature can be as complicated as written works, but generally it is true that uh, oral literature, uh, myths, folk tales and fables are relatively simple and there's a good reason for this because uh, myths and uh, legends, folk tales, fables, parables, they are told to people who are listening and when you're talking to, to listeners, when you're trying to tell stories to listeners, you have to be relatively simple. You have to use simple language, you have to have simple description of characters, you cannot go into too much uh, details about depiction of time and place. Now I have mentioned to you the ingredients that go towards making a proper modern short story. And these ingredients are special kind of use of language, depiction of character, and uh, presentation of time and place. And I shall be talking about each of these in considerable detail because this is where the craft comes in. How do you use language in an artful way? How do you go about presenting ordinary people as living individuals? And how do you depict time and how do you depict place? Now, we cannot go into all these ingredients uh, today. Let's just talk about the issue of language. The language of oral literature, I said, is simple. And it has to be simple because you have listeners uh, and uh, they have to understand what you're saying immediately. They cannot go back on what you have said. So you have to communicate at once what you want to tell to the listeners. And very often oral uh, stories are told to young people and therefore you cannot use too complex uh, language uh, for storytelling. But language becomes rich when it has a literary quality about it. And the literary quality comes to language from the use of figurative devices. And these figurative devices, some of us are familiar with, use of metaphors, use of similes, use of personification, use of imagery, use of symbolism, use of personification. And uh, we will be talking about these uh, figures of speech as we look at particular stories. Language is enriched by the use of figures of speech, by use of literary devices. Now, I cannot complete a full discussion on this today. We'll carry on this discussion in the next segment where we will talk about the depiction of character, time and place. We'll see you in the next segment.